ahead and dive into the AFC South. Write my times down so I can stamp them and whatnot. We will start off with the Tennessee Titans. Uh, several websites, of course, I've gone through and aggregated and figured out all right, exactly what were the needs for the Titans. Obviously, they lost Corey Davis. Uh, they need some offensive line help. Um, they, they need safeties. They need tight end because John New Smith is now with the Patriots. The yeah. Titans will roll through who they got. First round, they took a chance, and they have done that multiple drafts in a row. Caleb mm-hmm. Farley, cornerback out of Virginia Tech. Dylan Raddins, North Dakota State. He was a second-round guy, offensive tackle. Uh, linebacker Monty Rice out of Georgia was in the third round. Another third-round pick, cornerback, um, which is more a slot cornerback, Elijah Molden from Washington. Des Fitzpatrick, wide receiver out of Louisville in the fourth round. Rashad Weaver out of Pittsburgh in the fourth round. Uh, some character issues there. As soon as he got drafted, I'm talking the next day, there was some domestic assault stuff going on, so who knows what's yeah. happening with that. Uh, Racing McMath out of LSU in the sixth round, wide receiver. And that Chris, that's that's your team. This is somebody that didn't even play. I was just about to say, no, this this shocked me out of all the LSU guys. I, I don't know what he's doing. Maybe he's just a freak athlete, and he thought, you know, I'll get on with the team and I'll, I'll figure this thing out. I don't know. That's just not how the NFL works. But every year we do find wide receivers that nobody's ever heard of from places that nobody's ever seen, and and they kind of yep. make their way in the NFL. Yeah. So maybe he can be one of those guys. That's a that's a tough it's a reach. to crack. But, I mean, sixth round, all you're doing is taking a bite out of the apple. Uh, the last right. one. You're, you're just taking yeah. guys based on measurables yeah. and, and athletic ability. Exactly. That's it. Uh, Brady Breeze, the yeah. safety out of Oregon, who I absolutely love, could not believe he fell to the sixth round. Um, so let's let's hit this yeah. up. Let's talk about it. In the first round, Caleb Farley, was the, was the chance that they're taking worth the risk? Because, obviously, he's had two back surgeries. Uh, there's a reason he fell to 22. But he if, if he stays healthy, which is a big if, he is the most talented cornerback in this draft. Do y'all agree? Is he healthy right now? Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah, he's healthy okay, right now. so he is healthy. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> My thing with it, it, it's just weird. So here's what the Titans do. The Titans actually had three good cover corners. Their secondary wasn't bad because their corners were bad last year. They were bad because this team had a historically bad pass rush. They had the worst sack rate and pressure rate of any playoff team since 1970, or second worst, I think, like the 91 Bengals were worse. Something, something crazy like that. So then they go out. They get rid of all three. Adoree Jackson, shut down corner when he's healthy. I know he's been battling injuries. Malcolm Butler, I mean, we all know about Malcolm Butler. And Desmond King, whom they got in the slot, was really, really good for the Chargers, didn't really get his footing with the Titans. That's because he's got to cover someone for six seconds. So then they come out here. They wipe out their corners like, oh, we need a cover corner. No, you need a pass rush. So now you go out and you draft a guy who you don't know if he's going to be healthy. Is the talent there? Sure. You do absolutely nothing to help your pass rush and you expect your defense to be competent. So you're still going to have a horrible pass rush. Now you're going to have a patchwork secondary and maybe relying on an injured rookie corner. Rookie corners don't generally translate well their first year. It's a tough position to get used to in the NFL. So for me, I'm not big on the Titans. I do like the tackle they took in the second round. They obviously needed help there. But for me, I thought the Titans missed the mark, and I don't see how they're going to be any better next year than they are this year with the moves they made. Do you think that so, the it, it, let me let me ask this right quick because I I mean they had Vic Beasley, they had uh, Jadavian Clowney, like they they had guys that have produced yeah. in the past. Do you think this has anything to do with scheme as far as not being able to get pressure on that quarterback? Well, I mean, a lot of it could be scheme, and I mean, just guys before, the front seven was really really good. Yeah. Yeah, and they're just getting old and Jadavian Clowney. I'm so sick of Jadavian Clowney's crap. The dude holds out, thinks he's going to be some savior for some team. The dude's an absolute moron. Then he signs a one-year deal, gets one sack, two sacks, can't play every game. I think he's the most overrated. You know, he's one of these one-year deal guys, and that's what he's going to be for the rest of his career, and everyone wants him, and they shouldn't because he's not going to do crap for your team. So, yeah, I think it's a little bit of scheme, a little bit of age, health, obviously. I don't know that this whole division, it's going to be the defenses are going to be outside of the Colts. Maybe it's going to be a lot of bad defense in this division. So I'm going to be looking at overs for nearly every one of these teams next year, nearly every Sunday. I, well, I tend to agree. Chris, what do you yeah. think? Like, I think I think getting Rashad Weaver uh, will help. I, I think that he fell as far as he did because of yeah. all of the off field stuff. But again, that's another chance sure. that you're taking. And he's, he's not a guarantee, but he is somebody that can absolutely mm-hmm. pressure the quarterback. But, I mean, who knows? Monty Rice, linebacker out of Georgia, he certainly can get pressure. He did it at Georgia. Um, you know, I, I think that they did okay. Um, I'm not 
I, I will say that I don't like it, but I could see where if everything falls absolutely perfectly, it can be considered a good draft here in a couple of years. Uh, but I think it's going to take some time. I mean, they, they got some projects. Chris, what do you right. think? So, so I, I, I don't, this is a team that, that obviously <laughs> whiffed on their first round pick last year. And then they took another like, yeah. so, like this was, a, this is an organization that I think needed to say, we need a marquee piece here that can sit and stand and make this team better for a long period of time, regardless of what position it is. Okay. And, and I don't know that, that, that Caleb does that. The other thing is, is I'm not killing them though, for not helping their pass rush at 22. There's nobody in this draft. That's going to be a marquee yeah. pass rush player. This was the word. So, so I'm yeah. okay with them going after the DB position. I'm okay with that. At 22, there were still other DBs that I think I would rather have that I think are going to play a lot longer than than Caleb, you know. But but that's because you have you've had the debacles in the draft that you've had the last couple of years, and and yeah. I think at some point in time, you you keep taking these boomer bust guys and they're all bust. They're all bust. And and at at some point in time, you got to just take somebody safe, you know. Yeah I, yeah, I tend to agree with that. Like the uh, the Simmons thing from a couple of years ago, like he didn't get to play for almost the entire first season because of that torn ACL. Sure. But when he hit, like he's been pretty good on that defensive line. So mm-hmm. I, I think no, and, and Kyle was right about their problems. Their cover issues have nothing to do. You you and me talk about this all the time. I, it you don't you don't cover the best cover corners in the league. All come from teams that can pass the rush the passer. Every yeah. one mm-hmm. of them. You get. You might not get sacks, but if you're making that quarterback throw the football a, a second or two sooner than he wants to, then that helps your DB so much. And and you just you you the way you help your covers is you get pass rush. It's how you stop teams from throwing the football is with a pass rush. It's not with great cover corners. Um, and and until they can do that, but that's going to take time. They're either going to have to next year get aggressive in free agency which this might be some weird reset year for them. I don't know. And get aggressive in free agency because you just can't worry about drafting all these guys because they don't all pan yeah. out. And then yeah. and then you also have to spend money in the draft on them. Yeah. 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 All right, so I it's a, you, you like it or you don't like it, Chris? Uh, so I did all of these divisions, and I basically ranked every team how I like them and what they did okay. inside their division. I have them – I like them second – I think I like everything that happened in this division worse than every other division out there. Out of all eight of them, <laughs> I think these four teams did the worst job out of anybody. It's entirely nice. possible. It's entirely yes, it possible. Because the Titans, I don't like what they did, and I have them second, and that's only because Jacksonville, who we'll get to, got Trevor Lawrence. Sure. Yes. Sure. Let's uh, let's move on. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.